Just want to do a few updates on some of my um, field plantings. We're here at Shelter Belt Farm where I do some work for Erica Frenet. And this spring we planted some chestnut seeds in what are called bale bombs or round bales fed to the sheep and the, and the cattle during the winter uh, as winter uh, grass feed. And as they're eaten down and pooped on and urinated on and then they get mulched in and rot down, they become a perfect uh, opportunity for mulching, planting into some mulch. So let me show you here. I've started to put up uh, some protectors uh, from rodents and I'm going to be putting some deer netting on these bamboo posts to protect the this three um, planting here so there's multiple uh, seedlings in each um, protector that's just a uh, uh, half inch hardware cloth um, so so there are three sets of um, three seedlings here that did very well this year uh, only came through and and we did it just a couple times didn't need much um, protect much maintenance at all and you can see another set of uh, chestnuts down here so it's hopefully going to create a line of trees that follow the same pattern through the north orchard here at shelter belt farm the the orchard um, swaling system goes down the hill across so you can see one line here and another line as it goes down the hill um, another thing I'm going to be trying out this fall and winter is uh, planting uh, perennial forage crops or herbaceous forage crops in in the same bale bomb system and so I'm going to walk down and show you down the hill here from last year's uh, bales that didn't completely degrade walking down the hill here into the field and uh, there are four areas of bales that rotted down mostly um, didn't have a lot of weed seeds in them so or, or grass seed in them so they uh, didn't completely um, fill in you can see how the green here denotes where the bale was eaten and peed on and pooped on and so it's actually there's an, another bale bomb over there that didn't get uh, seeded in it's also very wet over there but here you can see it's very obvious where it's greener and that's because of the urination and manure that greens up the grass and that's what we're hoping for is, is actually we're doing this on purpose is both to feed the animals and to improve the pasture over time but in the areas that are um, not totally broken down mulched or uh, back into grass or forages you can see some native asters in here too which is kind of cool um, I've seeded in a mixture of some perennial herbs that I've been collecting um, to try a trial here in the in the pasture. Um, you can see some more areas of bale bombs. There's one here, very obvious, and up there where it's disturbed. That's where another place where I put some seeds just now, and a couple other spots here. And so what's going on is um, I also have. Uh, I've been doing this uh, very purposefully. Uh, so there's a gate up here that we use to uh, separate the paddock. So in the summer grazing season, a fence will come along here, a mobile electric netting fence comes across the land and then connects up with this other subdivision fence. So there's actually a, a, a subdivision uh, of the subdivision where the animals will eat on this side of the fence for a day and then the next day they'll eat on this side in the paddock and the fence isn't here right now because it's mobile and we we take it down after uh, they're done but what's neat here is what we'll do is we'll we'll grow these uh, perennial herbs that um, the hopefully the sheep and the cattle will eat uh, and we'll be able to separate out the animals depending on whether the the forage is ready to eat or not um, the mix that I did just for fun, I have um, wild senna, which is a nitrogen-fixing herb that uh, bees really love, and uh, I've read some 
some papers, scientific papers showing that um, sheep will eat it and we'll see how it does in the field. Also Illinois bundle flower, which is native to the western uh, central states um, of, the, of North America, is a, is a short uh, nitrogen fixing non-thorny um, herb that dies back to the ground and is perennial. Then I also uh, have a non-native in here uh, called Turkish Rocket, which is a, a mustard from um, Eurasia that is uh, uh, supposed to just naturalize just fine in, in pasture. And it is very high in protein. It's a mustard family. And I've actually done some down on the other side of the pasture. And animals just came through and they definitely ate it. So um, that's in the mix. And then I just happen to have some uh, um, bulbules, which are top set garlic. And my goal here is just to mix in. I had extra, uh, to have some garlic in here, you know, just to see how that reacts with the system. Uh, the animals probably won't eat it, but it's also, a, um, if they, if they establish and grow in this mulch, which is possible, it's wet enough out here, um, if they don't get swamped by everything else, it has the potential to have another added uh, enterprise benefit where we could come out at the end of the year if they get big enough, um, maybe the second year, and collect the bulbs to eat. So here's my um, my um, bale bomb perennial herbaceous forage trial here at Shelter Belt Farm. This is Jonathan Bates, foodforestfarm.com, signing off. Have a good day.